Go. Okay, so we're quickly gonna talk through the hinge as our first functional movement pattern. The hinge is executed by the hip joint opening and closing. You'll see here that with this PVC pipe, I'm demonstrating my hip handle opening and closing. The primary mover is of course the hips, the musculature around the hips, and the knee angle should stay roughly the same, okay? This applies for all different types of hinge movements. The first one, the most obvious one, is the deadlift, where the primary movers are the hips. Same with the RDL, or Romanian deadlift. Same with the kettlebell swing, where the hips generate the force. And then that can be applied to all sorts of functional movement, including the dumbbell snatch, dumbbell clean, sandbag work, for example, in here, all hinge movements, and that is how you execute them with the hip angle creating the force. The next functional movement pattern that we need to talk through is the squat. So the squat is where the primary mover is the knee an angle and the knee musculature. So when we're squatting, the knee angle is the one that changes, opens and closes, predominantly, not the hip, okay? And this is for all squat movements once again. You'll see here that my knee angle is the one that changes the most and actually my hip angle does change but is not the primary mover. This is the same for overhead squat, for front squat, for back squat, sandbag squat, could be goblet squat, whatever it is, could be a split squat, could be a thruster, any of those movements, all functional movement patterns, all including the squat, predominantly executed by changing and opening and closing the knee angle. Third functional movement pattern we've got is push. And obviously we're looking for upper body here. Execution is that the elbow joint opens and the shoulder angle closes. You can see that with this push, which could be a punch, could be a press, could be any, any form of push. My elbow joint is opening and my shoulder is closing. Elbow open, shoulder close. This applies to all functional push movements. It could be the strict press, could be the bench press, could be the push up, could be any form of push. That is how you execute a push movement. The fourth Functional movement pattern, again upper body, is the pull, and this is the reverse of the push. The uh, elbow joint is closing, and the shoulder joint is opening. This could be in a pull-up, elbow joint closes, shoulder joint opens. Could be the same on a row, could be any kind of row. This is a dumbbell row, elbow joint closes, shoulder joint opens, could be the same for any style of pull movement, bent over row with a barbell, could be a kettlebell row, could be single arm, double arm, doesn't matter, as long as the primary movement is that the elbow is closing and the shoulder is opening. Okay, this is slightly unconventional in terms of functional movement patterns, but one that I've added in because I think it's really important for health and functionality is holds and carries. Holds and carries are essentially the four basics, squat, hinge, push, and pull, but static versions or moving versions in terms of locomotion. So, for example, the sandbag hold is a form of hinge, an isometric hinge, where the hamstrings, the glutes, and all of the posterior chain, i.e. the hip muscles, are trying to stop me from falling into a hinge, okay? So this would be an example of a hold. The carry version would be that, of course, moving, okay? A hinge version. Squat version, example of a hold would be like a squat hold. You could do this with weight or just holding yourself. 
prime reactors around the knee, the quads, supporting me and stopping me from falling into the squat. A version of a moving or carry version of the squat would be something like a squat walk or a duck walk. Uh, same with overhead, push, okay. That isometric version of the push in the carry or the hold, this could be an overhead hold of any kind, barbell, sandbag, med ball, and then the carry version with that. And then the final one would be a pull. And this you'd be doing some sort of isometric pull. This would be, for example, with a uh, bent over row in a pull. You can't really... Last one that we've added in, again for functionality, a really important piece is rotation or rotate. And this is where we're moving around the longitudinal axis of our body. So this could be an example of that. And this is a wood chop. So creating that rotation through your midline and the hold version of that would be a pal-off hold where my rotational muscles, my obliques are stopping me from falling into the rotation. So I'm actually holding and fixing that. Some other variations of rotation could be a Russian twist. Again, still moving across the longitudinal axis of my body, but this time horizontally. I'm doing that Russian twist. You could do that with a med ball or some sort of throw. So a lot of uh, rotations required in sports. So if you've got a client that's doing a lot of sporting activity, they'll need to be able to rotate well. So that could be some sort of throwing rotation or some sort of kicking rotation. Okay, rotation is obviously a part of functionality too.